Welcome back to the Obsession Engineering Aprilia Tuono project. In the last instalment I'd stripped the injectors out of the throttle bodies and generally condemned bits of the bike, but this time I'm actually putting things back together. I've got here on the bench new gaskets for the injector bodies, for the throttle bodies, my new nicely ultrasonic cleaned and tested injectors. So we've blown them through with a power supply onto them as well, so we know that they're working. Uh, the old O-rings, because there's nothing wrong with them. And the pressure relief valve that I actually managed to rig up to the compressor and test, and it works correctly at 3.5 bar. So I'm just going to clean the throttle bodies, put all that back together, and that's a one step closer to running. That's the throttle bodies all back together with uh, the cleaned injectors and the new gaskets. The gaskets were from Aprilia Tech, so you can find them on Facebook. Very, very useful people to know. So I've got them all back together. Now, injectors, if you don't know, it's basically you've got a fuel supply to one end and then some tiny, tiny little holes at the other end. And the fuel pressure on these is about three and a half bar. And when the ECU gives a little computer signal uh, into here, a little solenoid moves a little electromagnet up there and it lets the fuel through to the um, tiny little holes and it sprays a real fine mist of fuel into the engine at the same time the air is going in and uh, that's how it injects its fuel so much more uh, much more precise than carburettors uh, and realistically actually less work before I put the throttle bodies back on and take up all the space here, I'm going to do the valve clearances because at the moment this is the best access we're going to get. So I'm going to undo the bolts on the rocker cover, I'm just going to lift the rocker cover off and then I can turn the engine over by putting the bike in gear and knocking the back wheel round which will just rotate everything. I can dog it round, uh, do the valve clearances which shouldn't be particularly difficult because they're quite easy to get to and there's not many of them. Uh, so yeah I'm going to do that, I'm also going to take the plugs out to make it easier to turn the engine over and I'm putting new spark plugs in. So I've taken the rocker cover off and I've taken the spark plugs out. Because I've got the stator cover off I could just put a tool on the end of the crank and make my life easy but I thought I'd show you my technique for doing valve clearances without having to take half the bike apart. So I've gone down here and I've put it into sixth gear and then if I put my hand, my other hand on the back wheel and then as I dog the back wheel around you can see it moves the cams and the balance shaft which is just there it moves everything around and what I'm looking for is I want the cam in this position so the lobe is sticking up which means the base circle is round by the uh, bucket and then all I'm going to do is slide a feeler gauge under here until I find one size that fits and the next size that doesn't and then I shall know my clearance just to try and demonstrate this in real time, I've got the inlet cam moved to the lobes at the top, so the base circle's near the uh, shim. So that's my 0.1mm feeler, goes in nice and easily. And this is my 0.15, and it doesn't go in at all. So that's probably about 0.13. So I shall check them against the manual now that I've done all of them. What you tend to find is the exhaust side is bigger because the exhaust valve obviously gets hotter and so the valve will expand more so hopefully that makes sense so yeah i shall put the rocker cover back on do the front cylinder check them against the book make sure everything's in spec that's the rebuilt throttle bodies back on the throttle adjusted so that all works nicely with not too much free play in it uh, the valve clearances are done and they're within spec the new plugs are fitted, so the next bit I'm going to do is put the airbox on. Now, at some point, I have to reroute when I put the new stator on, I'll have to reroute the cables under here, but the airbox sits quite high on top, so it's not really a problem. So that is the next thing I'm going to do, is put the airbox back on, and then it might have to come off the bench, so I can do a little bit of work on the ZX6 that's sat behind it. So that's the bottom half of the airbox back on, with a new pipe across air filter to replace the um, slightly... Uh, Mm, manky looking original so let's going to breathe a little bit better all that's connected all the little pipes and bits for the uh, idle control and stuff are fitted everything's nice and clean so the next job is airbox lid and uh, yeah that'll probably do this one for now thanks for watching and join us again next time when we'll be doing a bit more on project 12 now.